<laughs> Welcome to the lighter side of the dark side. It's your weekly freak show here on Renegade Radio. Also, Apple, Stitcher, Deezer, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you're listening to podcasts. It's the Dark Mark Show, and I am Dark Mark, the goth comedian. Once again, I do apologize. My regular co-host, Hannah Bach, the one who gets all the emails and all the praise, is not here tonight because uh, Grandpa's... He, she, you'll be relieved to know he's over his cold, but he's still a little weak and uh, trying to get back together. So she couldn't make it today. She got to take care of Grandpa. But Grandpa, uh, I was going to say Grandpa. Actually, we're trying to get Grandpa for, in for next week because <laughs> one of his crushes is going to be here next week. But Hannah will be here next week. We've got quite a month, and uh, I, we've got quite a show tonight. So I've, I'm here with uh, two of uh, my favorite people. One I just met and one I've known for years, and uh, already they're my favorite people. <laughs> to my left is my former co-host, but now she's a guest, and uh, this time, I know you were here a couple weeks ago, but this time we'll be talking more about what's been going on in your world and all the fucked up shit that that is. That's Nicole <laughs> Six. Hello. Very exciting. Yes. And Nicole, you know as well as I do, I, uh, I've been doing comedy a long time. Yes, you have. And it's very rare... That I find a comic that kind of blows me away, and uh, it's very rare you have a comic on your show. Well, that's true too, but uh, that's been uh, but, and when I do, they have to be interesting besides exactly. comedy. And here she is. I did a show with her in January. I was blown away. I thought she was the best comic I've seen in years, to be honest with you. Uh, and I've been telling wow. everybody that, and that's uh, Kristen Lumberg right wow. here. Wow, thank you. That's high praise. Well, yeah, well, Mark you. believes that women are going to be the future of comedy, so congratulations. Well, I think they're already, they are, it's the present of comedy, and I think <laughs> the guys uh, are going to be squeezed out uh, and marginalized, and hopefully, <laughs> I, I, hopefully I keep, I make the cut. We I, are, we are the matriarchs of comedy already. There you are. <laughs> but, then, but, but then again, you started in the mid, we, we're going to talk about this, but you started in the Midwest, and I think that, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, in LA, it's one thing, I think in Dayton, Ohio, and Chicago, and where you—that's probably a whole nother thing. Yeah, that's a whole nother thing. So whole, whole nother people. So, but <laughs> but 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 you, you would you would you agree that in LA, if you're gonna be do, if you're gonna be a female doing comedy, you should do it in LA. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, it's different in LA than it is in the in the Midwest for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um. The the Midwest, I felt like people were more polite, even though. There, I did have my fair share of hecklers. I did have my fair share of strife. But um, when I came out to L.A., it was like, oh, all of a sudden I'm having nightmares about how uh, Weinstein's penis must look. And, like, I'm just, like, it, it's really in your face all the time about, uh, like, with all of the uh, uh, abuse and pe things that we have to put up with. And um, So you completely disagree with me. You just think it's, it's more... It's more uh patriarchal here in LA than it is even in yeah. Chicago. Okay. I, yeah. I have the exact opposite. I, as far as, as far as comedy is concerned, I see so many great uh, female comedians here yeah. in LA. And I know that I have a friend who was that here. That just means the female comedians yeah, have they're to great. put up with more. <laughs> well, no, but I, 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 I think that uh, the, uh, when you go to a show, I think, uh, you know, a lot of uh, things as far as material wise and, and attitude wise, then maybe five, ten years ago, you, uh, guys could get away with they can't get away with anymore, and, that, and it's for the better. Yeah, true. And, and I think uh, women are changing the narrative and changing what is acceptable uh, as far as uh, shows. Yeah, mm -hmm. women, people of color, anybody who's like marginalized, all all of that stuff is changing now. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just what feel is like it like it's though good. to push the envelope now when everything is so PC? How does one push the envelope in a comedic stand-up? Well, a lot of, here, like, we, here we go talking about comedy. Before we get to that, <laughs> let me get to our sponsors really quick because uh, I want people to uh, to go to our sponsors. And I really didn't want to talk about comedy, but uh, I, I, I'll, answer, I'll have a question to answer that question I will after this. Audible.com. Uh, yeah. Go to Audible. You're on the road. You listen to audiobooks, right? Uh, I, I have. I've dabbled with Audible. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. I know. Nicole loves Audible because she's I a love writer. Audible. By the way, Nicole's a horror writer. I am. She's a model. She's an actress. She's a. She's uh, doing screenwriting now. She's doing all sorts of things. She's. A I'm not media. doing screenwriting. Okay. I'm looking for a screenwriter. <laughs> if you are a screenwriter, contact me. 
<laughs> I don't want to write the screen. She's looking myself. to get her books adapted to, to the screen. That's she what brought we're on. Fireball? He brought I, I, I brought fire. Fireball, and you <laughs> feel free to partake. Would you like a shot? I would. I'm gonna, I'll right. Feel free to partake, although I don't know how it goes with grape soda. You'll have to tell us. So go to Audible. True. AudibleTrial.com forward slash DMS. Uh, you've dabbled with Audible. Maybe there's somebody yeah. in the audience. I've dipped a toe in just a small. That's good. It's wow. a shot. Well, <laughs> well here's, how, here's how you dip a toe in. You, 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 go, to, you go to audibletrial.com forward slash DMS. You get a free book, mm. two free Audible originals, and a 30-day tri- trial for free. You don't, And you can cancel the next day. How is it? It's good, man. It brings back memories. <laughs> with the grape soda or without? Or is it like... Oh, I didn't put the grape soda in. No, no. No, but you still have the grape soda. cinnamon, no. You had, what was the last time you had Fireball <laughs> Whiskey? Probably like uh, Chicago. A long time ago. Like, in Chicago. What, like three, four years ago? Yeah, you know, a couple years ago, two years ago. Okay. It's been a yeah. while for me. All right, well. Yeah. But you know what, Mark? Well, I will always think of your show when I drink Fireball Whiskey. Oh, good. All right. Well, and I'm, this one really well, 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 party. Well, I well why, wouldn't I, why wouldn't I partake? So I'll, I'll pour myself a little something. Just taste something. it. Just a little something, something. Dip your tongue in. Anyway, so I was going to say, <laughs> Audible Originals range from uh, um, uh, Kate McKinnon has a fairy tale on there, which she performs with her, with, her, with her sister. I love Kate McKinnon. I love her uh, too. Alien 3, they have a, a William Gibson wrote a script for Alien 3 that wasn't used. They brought back uh, Michael Bean and Lance Henriksen and these cast to act it out. Whatever you want. And whatever book you want. They've got everything from Shakespeare to Smut to Stephen King. Whatever you want, go to audibletrial.com forward slash DMS. I recommend getting The Outsider on Audible. Stephen King is going through a, what I'm referring to as a true detective phase. <laughs> and it is a story about the Mexican boogeyman and true detective mixed together called The Outsider. So you get all the cop drama with a little, a little taste of the supernatural. That's pretty and, cool. And by the way, we live in L.A., so the Mexican boogeyman could be right around the corner. Anyway, <laughs> audibletrial.com forward slash DMS. That's how you push the envelope uh, in comedy these days. Uh, do, are, are you vegetarian? Because you're in such a great shape. Are you a vegan or a vegetarian? I'm a vegetarian mostly, but uh, you, yeah, sometimes I, I slip up. And I get a fish taco at work. Well, you would. Never. I was gonna say you like cheese. Yeah, I love cheese. I love cheese. I love cheese. Well, she could tell by my energy that I love cheese. cheese. Well, I, I, no. I don't mean to. I, yeah, I don't mean to I, I get, in, get in the middle of you two. But if you ever go to <laughs> do me some cooking, it's the best vegan food you'll ever have. Nicole can uh, vouch for this. It is. Well, I've yeah. taken her do me's plenty of times. You, you like burritos. You like nachos. Yeah. The nachos are one of the ten best nachos in L.A. Ooh, the only one they without have meat. seafood too, so you won't have to feel guilty. Shrimp po' boy. Oh yeah. Vegan shrimp po' boy. Vegan know, chicken yeah. parmesan. Vegan. Nice. Yeah, vegan burgers. They get a Big Mac on the secret on the secret menu. Oh really? Doomy's Home Cooking, twelve fifty three Vine Street, McDonald's Hollywood. McDonald's may not feel like getting on this Beyond Meat adventure, but we already have a Big Mac that's oh, vegan. You know, yeah. every, everybody, was saying, everybody, you know, everybody made a big deal because KFC. Had vegan fried chicken? Did they, or is that just Cartman acting up? They've, no, they, they, <laughs> no, 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 they, 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 uh, they put it out. Do me some cookies. Had vegan fried chicken for they years. Have. They put a piece of wood in there like a drumstick. Twelve fifty three Vine Street, Hollywood, California, right in the corner of Fountain and Vine, or Toronto, Canada. Also, the creme brulee is fabulous. Creme brulee is delicious. Oh, Ooh, they have they oh, the have desserts. Food. They have oh, they have. Deep fried Oreos, they have chocolate cake, they have oh, dang. Uh, all. Uh, We're not saying it's healthy. <laughs> it's not healthy. <laughs> but you're going to have a good time. <laughs> all cooked by the, uh, the chef Das Baker, which is a takeoff of the industrial club Das Bunker. Oh, really? Exactly. Yes. So, Is that how he found you guys? Yeah, well, he, <laughs> I actually, the first time I had uh, uh, Phil Dumi's cooking was at das, das Bunker. Huh. He, used to, he used to cook tacos at Das, uh, das Bunker. Also, Hust- free tacos for you now. Yeah. Hu- Hustler Hollywood. <laughs> HustlerHollywood.com. Uh, I love going to the Hustler store. Wow. Me too. Uh, get, yeah, nice get, sponsor. We oh, we got uh, you, you. You haven't you haven't heard anything yet. So <laughs> if you want you want you want to get a vibrator. You want to get some lingerie. You want to get dick pills. You want to get uh, novelties. <laughs> we have a twenty percent off code on this show, and also on our Instagram. Ten percent more than they give to strippers. That's right. <laughs> oh, That's right. Ten percent more than they give to strippers. <laughs> Plus a free gift. Twenty percent off and a free gift. Just uh, if you're listening to us or watching us on YouTube, just look, go in the description, click on the code, or it'll be on our Instagram page, Twitter page, Facebook page at Dark Mark Show. One more, Spy Associates. I know you've had some uh, experiences with stalkers. I know Nicole has. Yeah. Uh, you want to see who's watching you? They've got cameras and smoke detectors. 
Well, not that camera. It's, it's supposed to be. <laughs> but uh, uh, they've got smoke detectors. They've got. Uh, uh, and by the way, did I tell you you would love Kristen? Did I tell you you would yes, love Nicole? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, they've got they've got smoke de- the, the cameras and smoke detectors. They have GPS tracking. They have bug detectors. So if somebody has a bug, you can detect it. Oh, they've wow. got it's all James Bond kind of stuff. It's great. And once again, if you go oh, to the yeah. description on the show on any podcast channel, YouTube, uh, or go to our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook page, you'll get a twenty percent code every order over two hundred forty nine dollars. Wow. Let's start at the beginning. <laughs> and we'll get to your question. From the top. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to go through the show without talking comedy with Kristen at all, which is why I like to do it with all my comics. <laughs> Kristen, you may not, uh, you probably don't know, you are you were born with your foot completely backwards? What? Yeah. Yeah, I was born with uh, club feet. Oh, so like, they were both backwards. They were both backwards? Yeah. Like how, like, this is normal foot. They were like this? Yeah, so... They were curved in, so you know how you when you step, you your foot kind of turns out a little bit to the side. Uh, so mine were totally flipped in reverse, so my toes oh. were pointed towards the back wall. Ooh, yeah, they were backwards. How long uh, did yeah, they did they fix that right away? Or? Yeah, they fixed it. Yeah, like, they'd have to like, while you were still small and yeah, yeah, valuable. Yeah. <laughs> Will you have the baby pictures to prove it? No, <laughs> that's good. You no, don't need to see I'm that. Pretty, Who yeah. wants to see that? I don't want to see that. <laughs> yeah, I. I mean, I had a blanket cover me up in my baby pictures. Oh, okay. I have I've never seen. heard of this happening to a person. I'm sorry well, that happened. To yeah, you. it's called club club feet. Huh. Wow, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad it fixed it. And you're, you're walking fine. Everything's yeah. good. No, because we've had people on this show. We had you know we had somebody that has actually somebody next week is coming by as uh, ectrodactyly or she has web, web fingers. And we Whoa. had somebody that was born without a hip. Oh, wow. Whoa. Michael Gogan was born without a hip. I didn't know that. Yeah, so, I mean, but... I love Michael. Yeah. I dated a guy without a pectoral muscle. Oh, well, tell us about... Uh, <laughs> how is that possible? <laughs> he just didn't, like... it. Like, imagine, like, if you're a female, like, what it would be like to get a mastectomy on one breast. Just right. With a, yeah. Just with a guy. So you just didn't have anything at all there. It kind of dented in a little bit. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, huh. yeah. He was really self conscious about it. I'll, I, I, I would be too. <laughs> I, pecked, I, 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 how is that possible? Yeah, I don't know. It's like a really rare. It was a really rare thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, geez. There's a disease that makes it so you don't have the the. I don't want to say the hamstrings, but it might be the hamstrings. You, it's the front part of your legs. Mm-hmm. You don't have the muscle mass there, so you can't walk. No, I've, mm-hmm. I've heard of that too. But you grew up. Uh, in Dayton, Ohio. No, actually, a suburb yeah. of Dayton, Ohio. Yeah, Kettering, Ohio. Kettering, Ohio. Yeah. So how's that? It, that was good. Um, it was like a, a ranch-style home with a basement. Because I didn't know um, Dayton had suburbs. Yeah, yeah. Dayton has like a suburb of uh, Kettering, Beaver Creek, Oakwood. Beaver Creek and Oakwood were kind of like the nicer suburbs, and Kettering was kind of like... Eh. <laughs> right, and, right. <laughs> and then you had Dayton, which was like the the inner city, right? Really, right and right. then they had their own set of public schools and their problems and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, um. But yeah, I went to uh, Fairmont High School, home of the Fairmont Firebirds. Yay! Nice. <laughs> and Kettering, and and uh, your your classmates, uh, they uh, they had a nickname for you. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to think. I heard it. Uh, yeah. Uh, you remember? Uh, it's a room in a house. No. Okay. It's a. Uh, it's kitchen. They called you kitchen. <laughs> yeah, they called me kitchen. Huh? They called you kitchen? No, yeah. no there's another one I was thinking of. Fuzzball. <laughs> ah. No, that's not a real nickname. That's just. Th- that's a pet name? Yeah, that's just like more of a pet <laughs> that's, name. That's when you have a crush on somebody and you're like, hey, Ooh, fuzzball. Fuzzball. Hey, fuzzball. Hey, fuzzball. <laughs> they called oh, yeah, you, I think they my first boyfriend kitchen? called me that. <laughs> no, but uh, they called you Kitchen? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Um, it, it started when I was in like seventh grade. My friend, uh, her her sister couldn't pronounce my name. And she was calling me like Kitchen or something like that. Oh, okay. And so my friend picked it up and started calling me Kitchen. And I hated it. Like, I always hated it. <laughs> it is a strange thing. The nickname. more that she said it, the more people kept calling me it. And they'd be like, oh, well, my name is Living Room. And then this is Bathroom. And all, all that kind of shit. I, I, knew, I knew those jokes were going to happen. <laughs> I... I was like, man, 
so low brow, you know. Even right. at that age, I'm like, this is There's so nothing worse yeah. than hearing the same jokes <laughs> over and over from people who aren't funny. Yeah, yeah people, uh, people are being hacked at junior high. Yeah, yeah. By the uh, way, Mark and yeah. I went to the same high school, but at different times. I was just about to say, oh, wow. uh, Nicole had a uh, had, had, had a, an upbringing. Um, she, uh, she was in Colorado. We actually went to, uh, in, at separate Home times. Home of the Westie Warriors. Yeah, yeah. But uh, your childhood, as you've, uh, as you as you said, was uh, oh yeah, not, not, not the lot. happiest. It's okay. I was in foster care, so I moved a lot. But by the time I got to Westminster High School, I actually settled down and right. was able to graduate, and it was a lot of fun. I but really liked Westie. Westminster, Colorado, which is yes. a suburb of Denver. Yes. Okay. okay. That's uh, I, li- I I went there for junior high, and was you- that like where Kenny lives, or Kenny lives in South Park, which is a real place. Oh okay. And so oh, is yeah. Casa Bonita. You should go. Okay. But nothing there is vegetarian. You can get a vegetarian meal. <laughs> Neither is we're in Ohio, where I'm from. <laughs> well, hopefully uh, Phil will open up and do me some cooking over in, uh, in Colorado. Casa Bonita. <laughs> that would be cool. But I was, uh, um, now, uh, we, we've, talked about, we've talked about your upbringing before, but yeah. uh, you, w- when did you start writing? Uh, I actually started writing in foster care because when you're poor, you read a lot of books. And then I ran out of books to read, so I started writing books. Right. And I actually began professionally writing when I was still in foster care at age 15, and I won a computer. You won nice. a computer. I won a computer. I now, wrote now, a what, what, kind, what kind of computer was this? It was a Windows 2000. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Nice. No, okay. nice it desktop. might have been 1998. I think it was 1998. Still better than my laptop now, but... Uh... Back then, it was a desktop. And okay. I won it in an essay I wrote a uh, contest for the uh, Rotary Club, the Westminster Rotary Club. Oh, okay. How nice. Yeah. Now, were you writing horror then, or you were just trying to... I wasn't writing horror yet. I was actually writing, um, man, I guess you'd call it sci-fi. Uh, it was uh, stories about revenge and, like... It was a lot like whatever was on TV at the time. Because if you, you know... With, what was the CW called before it became the CW? The WB. WB. And we had so a really, Buffy and Exactly. We had Angel. a really nice block of TV that was paranormal, but not, like, scary. Right. That was mm. what I wrote, because that was what I was watching, and that was what I was reading. I read a, I read a shit ton of Stephen King. Right. Nicole the Vampire Slayer. I wish. <laughs> I was writing vampires at 13. Yeah. And, yeah. I had a story called Nara the Black Knight 2, which was basically if Buffy was Zorro. It was really cool. Huh. Hmm. Now, I, I, was, I, I uh, had heard something about you that you, um, you consider yourself a witch. I am a witch. You are a witch, which she never told me this. I've known her for years. I've noticed that you're rather skeptical about magic and other things. Well, yeah, but uh, <laughs> but, but, so we but we don't talk about it often. No, but we had the, we had a guest on uh, Davida Sal who said that every strong, powerful woman is a witch. If that, and what she means is that every strong, powerful woman is manifesting things with their mind constantly, which is witchcraft. Okay, but it's more different when you're a witch because you're doing it intentionally. You could just be a strong woman trying to get your way in the world and using manifestation. To be a witch, you have to be like I have spirit guides, I have tarot cards. I have crystals. Mm-hmm. I have candles. Right. I can make people happy. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. And and I've known her for years. She hasn't done any of this for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm still fucking it. miserable. <laughs> I'm working on it. I oh, give you my you. honest assessments every time you make a change to your character. Oh, <laughs> uh, it, uh, is that what I'm doing? Is making changes to my character? I, I did. I did change my hair, but it's, uh... <laughs> you did yeah. change your hair. Oh, okay. And your face is wide open and very inviting today. <laughs> Well, yeah. thank you. Do, do you agree with that? That every every strong, powerful woman is a witch. Um, I mean, I would. I think that's a strong statement. I do believe in. Uh, here's what I believe. I believe that every human has a certain level of telepathy and is capable of reading somebody's mind. And if you're capable of uh, knowing somebody well enough to read their mind, then you're capable to uh, enough to manifest a reality with that person or like a reality with you know like your career or like i don't know kind of like the secret yeah if you put out the vibes it'll exactly come to you. like the yeah secret. yeah yeah okay yeah. I, I agree with that but i believe in telepathy because of um del close at the at io at the improv olympic right formerly improv olympic sorry and uh <laughs> yeah 
the Olympics like suit them or something because yeah, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, yeah, I've never seen direct telepathy, but I've seen intuition, and some people have very strong intuition, and they can look at someone, yeah. and just read them like a book, you know? Yeah. Did, did you study with Del Close? No, I didn't. Um, I read books about him, and I studied his style of improv, yeah, which is uh, the Herald, and that's what they taught at I.O. and um. It's true. Like once you start to really get to know a person, and you're playing the same social game with a person, mm -hmm. um, you can kind of like start to gauge what they're gonna do and how they're gonna think, and that's you know like why people can finish each other's sentences and stuff like that. You it's get the a same good thing in improv. Them. Yeah, yeah. You, when you get a like a great team together that plays all the time, it, people. I mean, are so amazed at the things that they come up with and how well they listen to each other and stuff like that. And they say that it's almost magical, you know, that there can be, yeah. that, it, that people think, oh, it's had to have been pre-written or like there's no way they could have made that up on the spot. It's like, no, yes, they can. They have a similar human intuition. They're on the same wavelength. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how you end up finishing each other's sentences. It's how you all end up feeling and thinking the same thing. How you read a crowd. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why I always hate it when people are like, oh, I can't read your mind. I'm like, well... You kind of could if you wanted to, like, <laughs> even a little bit. <laughs> Try harder. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was impressed, I, I was impressed reading uh, about you uh, in that you got uh, kicked out of the Dayton comedy community, banned from the day, before the age of 18. <laughs> before the age of 18. Because <laughs> you, know, yeah. you, know, you know Olivia Grace? Um, Olivia Grace. Um, she was kicked out of, uh, she was banned from Flappers. Like when she was uh, when she was uh, eighteen. Oh really? And I was like, wow, that's an achievement. But you were yeah. banned from an entire comedy community before yeah, you were eighteen. Was, yeah, that was pretty much it. It it made me take to YouTube. Um, there was nothing <laughs> else to do after that point. Like I was like, well, what did you do to get banned from the Dayton comedy community? Um, you know, I'm not really exactly sure, but when I caught off stage, he said, your material's too blue. People were coming up to me complaining. You can't talk about your mom dick sucking. That, that kind of stuff here, get out of here and don't ever come back. Oh, so yeah, you so had a routine like, about your mother sucking dick? I had like a joke. Who doesn't? I mean, <laughs> I, had a, I had one joke like that. Um, Cause she used to have she used to have this uh, this lubricant in the bathroom called Good Head. And, uh, I thought it was Sorry. hair. I thought it was hair stuff. And uh, I think I think the uh, I think the punchline was like, well, because my mom sucks a lot of dick, <laughs> like, something like that. I'm not saying it was funny. I, it is kind of funny, but I mean, I, I'm saying like I was I was like a very new comic. It was an open mic. And try it out. there weren't a lot of opportunities there in the first place. And I was wanting to do comedy at that point, but there were not very many entry ways. So I really, I wanted to improv. And right. I wanted to start off doing improv or like sketch comedy, but... Because your, your inspirations were free. all that, Keenan and Kel, and... Yeah, yeah, I used that's to That's what really got Keenan you into comedy, Kel. right? Yeah, Keenan and Kel and uh, all that, and the Amanda so show. So after you get kicked out, you just start going on YouTube and just go totally independent? Yeah, I just went on YouTube, and um, I also did some open mics that were, that were like, more underground and some different, like, nice. shows that were kind of, like, collaborative. Like, this is a hip-hop comedy mattress show interesting <laughs> mattress <laughs> show yeah we're <laughs> now, I'm not we're down gonna, with the hip hop community what's a gonna, mattress show <laughs> we're gonna cover the whole floor with mattresses so you have no choice but to dance no, I don't know really <laughs> no <laughs> I'm just I'm just making up something crazy but no the but Dayton, they, were wild they had weird they had weird collaborations yeah. weird parties so you went to the Dayton Underground yeah so I would I would do shows there and then um, I also started the the YouTube channel uh, Mammy Spanks. Yeah, and uh, 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 explain Mammy Spanks to me because that, that used to be your Instagram. Yeah, it was my Instagram, and I, I changed it because I'm trying to go more mainstream. And <laughs> well, I do get a lot of bookings through Instagram uh, for comedy, and I know that commercial stuff is looking at that too. So sure. I try to keep it 100. Um, I think that's for next door. Yeah, there's, there's yeah. somebody's uh, yeah somebody's trying to lose weight next door. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, uh, yeah, and then uh, Mammy Spanks was my original YouTube name, uh, and I had a, I started that like 12 years ago or something, and, 
Uh, it's just like a weird name. Like I just wanted something that sounded kind of goofy, like Dada, right. like Dada esque. You know, right. like I, Lady Gaga. You know, her her backstory is like she loved the, uh, that Queen song. Uh, All we Liz, need is Radio, radio Gaga. Gaga. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I just like. Uh, All we need is <laughs> Mammy Spanx. <laughs> yeah. Spank yeah. the Mammy. Bang Mammy, Mammy. Spank. And then there, for a while there, I was uh, calling my fans like Mammy Spankonians and Mammy Spankers. Oh, <laughs> and like, right. I started like making my whole like vocabulary. Like if you have a questionian about me, like I'm a Daytonian. So like you. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> kind of like the dark minions we have here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I, I, the two of you have uh, a lot in common, other than the fact I think you have the same mother. But that's a whole, a whole different story, I, I, which I, we're not going to get into on air. But uh, you're both uh, uh, involved in so many areas of the arts. And, yeah. you know, you not only do you write, but you've uh, had your you, – and you've written for def, definite uh, different mediums, comic books and, 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 and novels and other things. But you you do uh, you do paintings as well. I do paintings. They sell. It, that means so I must be kind of good at them. <laughs> um, I do also. Uh, I do a lot of sketching. I like to sketch. Well, there's a sketchbook online from one of the projects I was involved in, so you can still buy those if you want. So that was back when I had my comic book days ages ago in 2012, I believe. Remember 2012? All that all those many years ago. Hey, you know, yeah. time's going by fast. It's 2020. Yeah, it was 2012 uh, is a long. Where was ago. supposed to end then? <laughs> I graduated college that year. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, you, you were. I mean, you were in the comic book uh, industry. Yeah. And it. it I was it, in the comic book industry until uh, 2013, and then right before it blew up and became mainstream, and everybody was. Uh, uh, comic book nerd. It is thanks uh -huh. to myself and a group of dedicated women that women got to be such a huge part of comics. Before womanthology, women weren't getting jobs. Really? Yeah. Becky Cloonan took forever to get a uh, Batman. She was the first woman to work on Batman. Or well, Gail Simone works on Batman, but right. Becky Cloonan was a uh, something like the first woman to draw Batman, and that's so recent. That's weird. Hmm. Well, it was a bit of a boys' club for sure. Yeah. So we, uh, I can imagine there's some comic book Weinstein's uh, walking around. <laughs> you probably know the names. Anyway, <laughs> that's a yes. I may have been inappropriately approached by some comic book creators. Yes. Oh, okay. Wow. But I also figure that's just because they didn't know how to talk to girls. Yeah. I bet they do now. I wanted to write this story about the scarecrow getting uh, not invited to a party. And so he haunts all the villains in the DC universe and makes all their worst feel fears come to reality. And I was told, why don't you just start with something easy like Wonder Girl? I didn't even know who Wonder Girl was. Oh. That's a great. That's a great concept. I know it would have been awesome. I write horror. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I'm sorry. Maybe I Wonder, Wonder Girl. Wonder Girl. <laughs> Wonder Girl doesn't get invited to a party, and yeah, no, yeah. that's so bad. That'd, that'd be a terrible. That's, that's very. That's very reducing. Yeah, that's so bad. <laughs> it, it, it's not oh, even you, you, the you, same genre. Yeah, like you're Jesus. you're a young woman. You got to draw the. You got to write for the, the young. The point woman. is, girls don't get to make Batman. Well, uh, <laughs> With the hope, exception hopefully of Gail Simone hopefully and Becky Cloonan. Yeah. Still, still. It's uh, you, people don't realize it because there's not that many people looking that closely at comics, and it is kind of a boys' club. But it's still not a lot of women in comics, yeah, that's not and it's not because there aren't women. There are over 160 women that in 2012 that I made a comic book with that would say we'd all work in comics if we could. Right? Would you? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Writing a comic <laughs> script is easier than writing a screenplay. Well, this is what I was going to ask, because I know you were trying to, and I, 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 I misspoke earlier. I don't want earlier. to write the screenplay. What we're doing is we're working on a story right now, me and a person from the comics community originally who also makes films, Digger mm -hmm. T. Mesh, and he wants to adapt one of my short stories. And so there's that middle area in between having a short story and wanting a really good screenplay writer to adapt one, mm -hmm. and then you make a movie. Right. I can't write screenplays. I I've tried. It's not my skill set. It's a different skill set entirely from writing. How so? Well, it's mostly dialogue based for starters, mm -hmm. and then you you have to start with ninety pages. It could be more. It could be less. But it shouldn't be less because right. then it's going to be an episode, and it's just a completely different style of writing. Like when you write a comic book script, it's twenty two pages, and you mm -hmm. have to write with sequential art in mind. Right. And 
writing a uh, screenplay is very hard, actually. You should have respect for anyone who can write one. Even though it's the same story. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll get a screenwriter to get that going. I would. Well, the person who's interested in adapting uh, my one of my stories can write screenplays as well. But I'm looking into meeting more screenplay writers. I'm serious. If you're a screenplay writer, hit me up. And Please. I would like to – I have everything in place that I need to make one. I just need a script. Okay. Yeah. Well, all you screenplay writers, please, uh, come, uh, if you're watching The Dark Mark Show, and I, I actually know a couple. I, uh, I should, I, we, we had the screenwriter uh, who wrote The Italian Job and uh, Deep Blue Sea on. Oh, nice. wow. Should, we should match, you on, uh, match you up with him. I don't know if they like horror. Well. I mean. He does, but uh, he's, uh, yeah, the, we, we had a bond. Here's with, another thing we, that bothers it, it, me about Hollywood. Okay, here we go. Here we go. The gloves are off. Nicole's calling. Here we go. Hollywood mm-hmm. likes to pretend that horror doesn't sell when horror sells better than mostly everything else. Horror, uh, who pretends that? They, uh, Horror's ruling everything. They really believe, like, first off, they would prefer I was writing romance. I'm a girl. I have no business writing horror. Not anymore. Well, that's what I've been fighting against for a long time. I'm still, I'm still a girl. It still would be hard to get in right now. Okay. Um, I would be able to get into an independent film, but I'm going to have a whole bunch of people in the studio taking over, which is why I just want to have, write the short story, probably have a male screenplay writer, a male producer, and a male director. Right. Then it doesn't matter. Okay. All right. Story by Nicole Six. <laughs> exactly. Story by Nicole Six. Team up. Well, that's what I was going to say. You have so many varied art, art interests, as does Kitchen. I mean, Kristen. Right here, right here. <laughs> you... Actually, you have maybe the coolest day job of any comedian I know. Yeah, um, it is. It's decent. And And when I say cool, no pun intended. It's fun. No, it's an ice sculpting job. You totally meant it. (laughs) That's cool. I spend a lot of time. I wish I was that clever. I'm in the freezer. That's cool. (laughs) Hey, listen, it's a good way to, it's a great way to break the ice whenever I'm meeting people. So you take a chainsaw. Yep. To ice. Yeah. And oh, make that's, things over. That's different than sculpting. Yeah, yeah. So How do you uh, uh, finesse that? Um, well, you finesse it with chisels and drills. But, um, yeah, the the initial cuts, if we're doing, if we're talking like a, a figure sculpture, like the initial cuts are done with the chainsaw. And then, like, uh, you know, it's a very reductive process. Um, so you got to be careful not to take off too much ice. It still needs to melt. And... It's uh yeah we can be refined with drills and sanders and stuff like that. That's cool. So you take yeah. a block of ice. Yeah. And say there's yeah, I don't know there's a, a project that's due on Saturday. What when do you take the ice out? Yeah. Uh, the ice usually just they take it out in advance. It kind of sits in a big pile in the freezer. There's like like twelve or I don't know twelve or fourteen big blocks sitting on top of each other. Okay. So they're usually just like ready. And then uh, if I had something like Saturday, I could make it Friday. Just depending okay. on what it is, yeah. So you come in with a chainsaw and uh, get, get ready to go. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, I don't, I don't do eye protection unless I'm doing some like Wait, logo it, stuff. You don't do you, you, you chainsaw ice without eye protection? Yeah. Wow, you're you're crazy. Nah. nah. <laughs> so you're working the chainsaw though. Yeah. And then I'm someone else comes in and does the, the delicate tink, tink, tink for it. <laughs> no, no, no. No, you do the I tink, do tink, tink, too. too. That's really yeah. cool. How do you- yeah, I would never go tink, tink, tink for the ice sculpt because it would break the whole thing. It's okay. a, you got to make a, you know, you got to, if you want to take away a piece, you got to, like, first make definitive cuts with the chainsaw, and then you can kind of stab it out or something. But, yeah, the ice is really hard to control, so just, like, making sure that, you know, you, you like, define, like, where the cuts are going to be first. Of course. Yeah. What is your favorite type of sculpture to make? Um, I don't know. <laughs> My favorite... <laughs> I, There's someone I'm coming gonna, to mind. Tell us what you're thinking of I'm right just, now. Uh, my favorite sculpture to make is going to be when we get the CNC machine and I can just type it in the computer and not have to sculpt it anymore. <laughs> oh, the, 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 the visual of you and a chainsaw is just so irresistible, though. Yeah, I know. But, you know, they're coming out with new technology that's uh, surpassing what we could do by hand. And the, the price is uh, getting lower. Patents are expiring. Things are like... 
happening. And quite honestly, there's other ice places that are getting uh, bigger clients than we do because the quality isn't that of a machine. Oh, wow. So, yeah, like people are going to other better but, places that have CNC machines. But of the, of the sculptures you've done, what was your favorite? I would say my favorite's been um, I carved E.T., a while ago, some kid was having a like an ET birthday party theme, theme birthday party, and um, I also did a hundred dollar bill. But um, oh, that's intricate work. Yeah, yeah, that, this, a, that was a lot of hand work. Yeah, and it was like forty inches wide, so like as long as this table, about the size of this table, and then like ten inches or eight inches thick. And uh, I put my signature where the president's signature was supposed to be. Oh, that's great. (laughs) It's Benjamin Franklin on the 100, actually. (laughs) Benjamin Franklin. Okay. He's probably uh, one of my favorite people in history. uh, Why is that? He was a genius. All the stuff he did. He started a newspaper. He went and became a French ambassador. He had inventions. Benjamin Franklin... Was That's never right. president, but he did so many things. Yes, yes, he did. Now, I was going to say that you've, <laughs> you've completely revamped your social media. I have, yeah. We were talking about this. Now, so, you, you were that Nicole Six. I was that Nicole Six, and I had a uh, regular Nicole Six Facebook. But they just sort of, I don't know, they sort of topped out. I did all I could with them, so I, I had a second one in backup that was called Just Some Fucked Up Shit. It was about my books. Right. And so now I'm Nicole Six Books because that's what my focus is on. Yeah, I forgot to tell you her uh, books are some, uh, some fucked up shit mm-hmm. and some fucked up shit ghosts. And I'm working and on some fucked up shit witches right now. There you go. Listen, I wanted to say if about the, screen pre- yeah. about the screenplay, I've been wanting to do... Um, like an angry ice lady, maybe it'd just be called the angry ice lady, <laughs> or or maybe it'd be called like get out. So do you need a screenplay writer too? Yeah, I, we, we all. <laughs> but I don't feel like it. Uh, <laughs> I just write stand up for myself. It is very uh, hard. To angry write ice lady, like a yeah, an yeah, ice so, lady with a chainsaw, like yeah. So she get mad at her coworkers for like whistling at her, doing all the, the they harass me and shit. I've, it sounds I've very made, shop I've smart as smart. Yeah, you know, so I take them, I freeze them in the blocks of ice, and then I chop up <laughs> their bodies and make, like, beautiful art out of them. I like it. <laughs> That's great. Very evil and, dead of you. And nobody would ever know. No one would ever know. Except there's a, excuse me, there's a body in the ice that I, uh, the E.T. ice that I ordered for my <laughs> son. There's a body in here, and, uh, yeah, he seems very inappropriate. <laughs> So I know you, you were because uh, because your social media is great too. Thank you. Because you've done you 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 know how to do graphic design and all that other stuff. And yeah, yeah. Your website I, looks professional. Thank you. Yeah, I just redesigned my website. So so excited. Uh, I work with a web designer. He lives with me as my roommate, and uh, we we think about this stuff. We're like, okay, Kristen. Are you guys you know, still like, in bunk beds you, or? Uh, yeah, we're still in bunk beds. We got that bunk bed situation going on. Um, are you on top? Top bunk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I want to be on top somehow. You're the star, you know, of course. <laughs> uh, so, but, yeah, he helped me design it, so we put some action items on there. So as soon as you go up to the homepage, you can click a clip and watch something right away. You can clip to buy my tiny violins right away. You don't have to. Yeah, I was going to get to that. Yeah, you got some great merch. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's still it's still all up there. Um, I just got a spurt, uh, a big growth spurt of followers on YouTube, subscribers on YouTube. Like, I don't know what happened. Uh, within the last couple of weeks, I got like 900 followers on YouTube. That's kind of what Mark was talking about. My, uh, yeah, yeah. social media revamps all of a sudden, boom, like it's yeah. insane. I got 5,000 followers pretty much within the last two months. So that's really cool. That's, uh, is that on Instagram or Oh, YouTuber. my Facebook, it just tapped out, like, automatically with just a few grind house pictures. Okay, okay. Yeah, I guess, like, I don't, I have no idea what happened Do you target in my... specific fan bases? Like, obviously, I was targeting a specific fan base with mine. No, but I think my fan, bla- my fan base might be, uh, like, just, like, dirty old men. 
Um, Mine too. <laughs> I, I think both of you have the same fan base. <laughs> but I'm trying. Like, so I have this uh, this video of me at the Terracotta Nudist Resort doing stand up. Hold on, one um, second. Wearing, Let me pull that one up. I'm wearing, a, I'm wearing a shawl. I'm wearing a shawl, but you know, still that that title though. Like, well, it Amanda got like 175,000 uh, views. That'll do it. Amanda yeah. Palmer got her start playing piano with a light up her skirt. You never know what's gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you just put that video up? I didn't. That video has been up for months, but for some reason, within the past couple of weeks, like it got like a hundred thousand views right. all at once. Someone important and then must some have tweeted subscribers. You. I wonder what happened because <laughs> I didn't get that. I didn't get that uh, tag. So, so how was uh, that, I mean, that performing to performing comedy in the nude? To people in the nude. I mean, you were I had a shawl on, but everybody yeah. else was, you know, free balling. How was that? Wouldn't that feel weird though? Like everyone's just laughing at your naked body. From me? <laughs> <laughs> well, they well, wouldn't laugh at your like... naked body. They would laugh at mine. <laughs> they wouldn't laugh at yours either. Yeah. Paul, maybe. But I, <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't laugh at your naked. But you bottled. You're a beautiful woman. Yeah, they, I mean, it was like there were other beautiful women there too, so it wasn't really a, a big thing. A lot of uh, the audience members were a bit older than I am. So, you don't say. Yeah, they're all like in their fifties and stuff. Yeah. So what was there the were women there too, so it wasn't like some women in their fifties too. Yeah. Oh, totally. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say, what was the video? What was uh, what about the video got so many different likes? I think just because it said just because it was a uh, nude or something, they probably oh, maybe, just some, were maybe somebody trying else trying to find porn on YouTube. You know, how people. Well, maybe so. Try it it might have been. A, a, it's possible another comedian had like nude comedy. Yeah, and like they suggested yours. Yeah, uh, I still think something. Like, maybe there's a like, there's like a Reddit good. thread or something. Yeah. I don't know. Because I, I know I know somebody <laughs> else that did uh, comedy like in the uh, swingers resort, and it was a, it's a it's a nude people and okay, that was a whole thing. But but I mean, was that was I mean, when people were laughing and like you know, parts that you wouldn't normally see are bouncing up and down when they're laughing. Is that weird? <laughs> No, I I no, bleeped the part. No, she's naked. The audience isn't naked. No, the <laughs> audience, we're all naked. No, the really? audience was yeah. naked. No, it's a nudist resort. Okay, yeah, 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 really You were not naked. You had, had a shawl on. I had a shawl on because I wanted to put it up on YouTube. Right. But you could tell right. I was naked because there's a part where I jump up and you can see my cooter like in the front, but I, I bleeped it out. Wait a second. Otherwise, wait, wait, oh, 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 wait a second. I'm sorry. We had to because otherwise YouTube would pull it. Pull, I get YouTube it. YouTube would freaking pull it. Yeah, so I had to. Um, but Good I'm job. like, you know, with all of this, like with all these followers, like I want to start something. So I started, um, I'm trying to start a talk channel on my YouTube, uh, where I just talk about comedy and talk through like, are you going to be nude? Talk through romance. No, no. Wearing a shawl? <laughs> I think they no. might expect you to be kind of nude. They expect me to wear fishnets now. I can do that. I well, wear fishnets well, often. Well, that's the thing. Cause you used to model. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A little and, bit. And, uh, Nicole has always had a, a sexy image because she's a sexy woman. But she posted, when, when you restarted your social media, you posted some uh, Grind pro pictures. probably the most salacious pictures I've ever seen of you. And they're not that salacious. It's her, no. yeah. it's, it's her in stockings and, and Seriously, bras. I'm just in stockings with my legs crossed. I, they're totally tame. Because, <laughs> because uh, we have a mutual friend who uh, we might be in the same movie actually together. It looks like we're going to be. Uh, where he has a fetish for stockings. Oh, okay. He started the Nylon Girls. Yes. Okay. Yes, All he right. did. So uh, you, th this was uh, kind of to uh, get, get – and then based on that, you got 5,000 Instagram and 5,000 Facebook followers. People are immediately drawn to the page, and then they also like the book. Like the moment they find out that I have a book, they all want to buy it. So that's – That's amazing. Helpful to me. But yeah. I'm at the 5,000 friends limit, so now you'll have to follow me on Instagram. But I'll yeah. follow you back. I just I can't add any more friends. I'm sorry. And she does follow. She does yeah. follow people. Back. And it took me. You might have to delete a few of those because you need to leave room for con like real connections, like business connections. Well, they will send me messages and then I add them because yeah. I lose like a follower or two every day. But there's uh -huh. over a thousand people waiting to be my friend, so mm -hmm. it's not a big deal. I then go around and I find someone who has mutual friends and I add them. Okay. Right. Yeah. I don't. Uh, <laughs> If you have like three uh, mutual friends and your name Sorry. is something and you're in some weird foreign country, I don't add you. <laughs> I, but if we have if we have a hundred, it was mostly well, we people who like rock and roll. Yeah, which are perfect for me because they like sex appeal and horror. No, we get we get that I get that on a daily basis. Like some weird like guy and they got like three friends or or for me it's usually a girl like a beautiful woman. It's like ooh who's this and like 
oh, it's uh, three other guys and they're all comics and that's the other <laughs> other people, yeah. That's perfect. So, no, but I thought maybe they reran your uh, America's Got Talent audition and maybe that's why you got some hits. Oh, maybe. Maybe, um, you know, I don't think that ever went to air. Really? Yeah. So, because let me, I didn't, I didn't give you the whole trajectory. You went to college in Cincinnati. Yeah. And you were doing comedy there. Yeah. And you were, uh, graphic arts was it? Or you yeah. Were, okay. Yeah. And, and that's when you started working at a toy factory. Yeah. At a, at a toy sculpting place. Toy sculpting place. Yeah. It she was did a lot a, of sculpture. Yeah. Yeah. That was, um, like one of my first, yeah, that was like my first job out, out of college. Um, and, uh, I got it cause I, um, I used to, I was like. I knew somebody who worked there and um, he came into a coffee shop I was working one day and he said, oh, I remember you. And like we caught up and uh, he said, we're hiring people at our toy company that know how to work computers because we got this new software that we're dealing with and the software is crazy and they're trying to hire millennials that would like be willing to sit there and actually learn the software. Right. And they were experiencing a bit of pushback with the employees that were working there because okay. everything was all traditional sculpture. Um, they so, had like Geppetto working there and he yeah. was like sculpting everything <laughs> out of wood and yeah. Yeah. And like, so they had like original Star Wars prototypes and like really like things that people find valuable. Um, Angry Birds. Yeah, dude, I worked on Angry Birds. I um, if you go to behance.net slash Mammy Spanks, M A M M Y S P A N X, <laughs> you'll see all my old uh, po- poly paints and uh, like sculptures and. Um, now yeah, is that a yeah, fun I job or is that really tedious? It was really tedious. It was hard. It was minimum wage. It was like twelve bucks an hour or something, and. Um, yeah, I got paid. I got paid by the hour. I got paid f- fair for all my work, but um, it was very uh, t- like hard to stare at a computer screen for all that time for like twelve hours at a time. You know, trying to push out a project and nobody has the answers to your questions because the software is so new right. that not even the not even the deep internet had the freaking answers. To Ooh, you went to the videos. dark web to find out how to find <laughs> Dude, we were noise. digging deep, man. We were <laughs> digging deep. I was like, man, I was like desperate to f- find the answers to some of these questions. And really, honestly, sometimes the best way with brand new software is to just figure it out yourself. Right. Which sucks. But yeah, I had to do that. Because Han Solo <laughs> has to look like Han Solo. Yeah. And Angry gotta, Birds have to look like Angry Birds. They got to look like Angry Birds, but above all else, they got to look cool. Is that why the brats don't have noses? Uh, the brats don't have noses because... Because I don't know, it's like a surgery. stylistic, yeah, it's like a stylistic choice. It's so plastic something... surgery. You want to have big eyes and a tiny nose. What is that what it is? is? Okay. Well, you know big what it lips. is. The I thought science. it was user error. I didn't know. There's a science behind cute stuff. So, like, when mammals are born... Like, all of our heads, our foreheads, and our eyes are a lot bigger than our nose and mouth. And this is like, this triggers a maternal instinct in both males and females to take care of this little thing. So this is like a scientific thing in our brain. Yeah, it's and it's in all mammals. And uh, so, like, if you look at rabbits, bears, like baby cub animals, they all have a bigger forehead and big eyes. And they did some tests... I read it in, like, Wired magazine or something like that. Some magazine. They did some tests on it the brain. It sounds true to me. Yeah, and it, it, like, it like forces you to want to, like, kind of take care of that. So when when Baby Yoda came out, <laughs> you know, dude, like, that, they they hacked us. They uh, hacked I our I want to take care of Baby they, Yoda. And they're doing, it, they're doing it with dolls. They do it with, like, all the Well, it also makes sense with toys. our pets because, like, cats and dogs have much smaller noses compared to their eyes. Yeah. Yeah. And then once somebody's eyes and mouth grow, you're like, ah, oh, fuck them. Yeah. Fuck them for themselves. Well, no, we are, we're still trained to think that of a large mouth is suggestive. Oh, I know that. So, but it's Because true. you have a large mouth. So that's why they're... I, I do have a large mouth. <laughs> uh, I have big red lips. Um, but I, know that, she, I know where she was going with that. <laughs> but that's why we're into small noses. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, that, that... It could be one... I mean, one of the reasons... 
I'm not really into small noses, but I'm also that. not really into like giant noses. I yeah. want people. I'm Italian, so the Italian nose is usually like right just there, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, a good so, nose. So, 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 yeah, it's like perfect. So that takes me out. Anyway, uh, <laughs> no, but tell uh, you when, haven't, Mark. Your no, nose we, is a perfectly no, no. We size. Uh, oh, we measured my it nose is. a couple it weeks is. ago, and I was I had the biggest nose in the it studio. Looks but good. thank you. Now you uh, speaking of speaking uh, of, I think your nose inches. is bigger than mine, but it's small on your face. Okay, it's like two by three. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> We're always measuring my nose. Uh, no, but you, you. Well, Mark, they say if you have a big nose, you also have a big penis. Uh, yeah, who's, who said that? <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's it's the thing. Okay, well, I'm not going to disagree with that. <laughs> now uh, you you went from Cincinnati to Chicago, and that's really where you did yeah. serious stand up. But tell yeah. Nicole about the job that you had in Chicago. Oh, at the at what the Redhead Piano Bar? Yeah, yeah. There's a Redhead the Piano Bar. Yeah, Is it just redheads. No, no. Uh, I actually didn't have red hair when I worked there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, the red hair came afterwards. Really? But, yeah. You're yeah, not a natural like, redhead. Oh, you pull it off so well. I thought you were a natural redhead as well. Thank you. I appreciate. It. Yeah, I'm not, gonna, so I'm, this, not this is I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I I did do a show that I headlined, like a comedy show. It was uh, like all redheads, <laughs> and um, you felt like a fraud. I felt like a fucking fraud, and they wanted to do an interview with me and all this stuff. I was like, no, 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 I'm okay. I'm good on interviews, you know, because they were gonna ask about my redhead life and all that stuff. <laughs> because and I don't want to have to t- talk about my goodness being, you know, <laughs> I wasn't the ginger. I've had a soul the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> But well, you play violin, and uh, yeah. like, I mean, I'm sure play, people are like, oh, she's like a hot carrot top. You know, I'm sure you get that <laughs> all the time. That's exactly what they're thinking, hot yeah. carrot top. <laughs> yeah, she's a beautiful, if carrot top was a beautiful woman, look like you. It's that yeah, so, guy. I mean, I think sometimes people think that. Um, I don't know. I think. Uh, so you're naturally brunette then? I'd, I'd beat them to the chase. Yeah, I'm a I'm natural brunette. Yeah, because you did yeah. you did the eyebrows too. Now I'm I'm like looking at it. No, I didn't do no. I didn't do. Okay, anything so that's not, that's natural. Okay. Yeah. All right, but it blends yeah. in with the red, so it's, yeah. Yeah, sometimes I mean the cool the cool thing about the redhead gene is um, you have to either have a mom or a dad that has red hair to get red hair. If you if I were to mate with somebody who had red hair, that child would have red hair a hundred percent. All right. Yeah, mm. I just I think it's kind of cool. So, I like gingers. So I think they're for. hot. Like I Sean White, that is a very attractive man. Sean White. Sean White is Sean White. Well, that, that's comic? Probably, no, Sean White's a skateboarder. Or oh, or a snowboarder. snowboarder. You probably get that, too. Oh, no, no, I don't get Sean White. <laughs> oh, wow, the, the snowboarder. There's also a comic named Sean White. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Sean White is... There's so many comics now that all the names are overlapping. Yeah. Back in his... <laughs> Early days when he was just an X Games performer, but now, yeah. now he uh, full full blown man, full blown Olympic <laughs> gold medalist. <laughs> Sean White's hot as hell. Well, I'll have to look him up. He, it do, goes I by the enjoy, Crimson Tomato. Uh, yeah, oh, so, Crimson Tomato. Yeah, terrible nickname. It, I don't think he chose Gross. it. I think the fans chose it. Yeah, <laughs> the nicknames Crimson are like tomato. that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you don't always get to pick yeah, your wow, nicknames. Yeah, well, trust me, I know. I had I. I I had nicknames that took that got kitchen and fuzzballs of shame. People just call me <laughs> number six. No, but you you worked at you worked at a piano bar where it, it, I yeah, guess it was it, piano bar. it was like a Dick's Last Resort meets Hooters from what yeah. I heard. <laughs> yeah, they had us wear our our mandatory uh, uniform was a pair of stockings with a suit jacket that was over lar- that was uh, oversized so that the suit jacket covered our ass. Mm-hmm. Um, it was supposed to go just below our ass. And then we were to go get the suit jacket tailored so that it would fit our curvature. And they would give us 50 bucks for the tailor. Um, and we would have to like go buy a suit jacket off the internet or out of the thrift store was where they suggested. And we had to wear a red collar, a red uh, choker ribbon, and, um, wear ma- wear- and wear makeup in minimum two-inch heel. Did you wear underwear <laughs> underneath the I- suit jacket? Or was it just stockings? Just stockings. Yeah. So it was, this but, sounds really hot. Yeah, That's pretty cool. It was a, actually a really cute outfit. Um, the the idea behind it was it was supposed to look like you're um, a woman who's putting on the man's jacket to go out of the hotel room to go get a bucket of ice. Oh, sure. And you yeah. just needed something to put on. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so you used the dude's jacket. And you would go from comedy to, <laughs> to wait tables in that, in that outfit? Yeah, yeah. So there were a few nights I would go. You're very good at using sex appeal for your career. 
Thank without you. being like slutty about it. I respect that. Thank you. Yeah, I don't post my it's ass hard. on Instagram. I don't post my ass on social media anywhere. You don't really see more of me than you know what you're looking at. I right will now, never do but... a nude. <laughs> but I don't need to. That's another thing I learned from yeah. this experience. Some good fishnets are just as good as a high quality mm-hmm. nude. The mystery. <laughs> the mystery is. I would, but it'd have to be them. tasteful. But that's <laughs> a, but in 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 Chicago, that's where you 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 got out of America's Got Talent. Yeah, yeah. So that all came at once. So I would go from like the I would do a set at the Laugh Factory back then. I was a paid regular at the Laugh Factory. Yeah. You get like sixty sixty bucks a night to do a set. I would go there. I would go to the Redhead Piano Bar. I'd work from ten p.m. at the at the piano bar until like two or three or four in the morning. And um, oftentimes I would wear glasses, like little fake glasses, so people wouldn't recognize me. But it never failed. Pe- people them. always recognize me. They'd be like, weren't you just at the Laugh Factory? Right. I saw you at the Laugh Factory. How close right? was it to Laugh Factory? Sorry, Superman. It <laughs> wasn't too, it wasn't too far. The Laugh Factory yeah. is like, oh, oh, they're probably like a mile apart or something. Oh, okay, like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, Laugh Factory was like, like in Uptown or, yeah, and then uh, the place I worked was downtown, so... Uptown and downtown, you know? Right. How was the Laugh Factory in Chicago? I love the Laugh Factory here. Laugh Factory in Chicago is huge. Yeah. Yeah, this, uh, that could fit 300 people in it. Wow. So it was, pre- it was pretty overwhelming, especially in the wintertime. A lot of people would come to the Laugh Factory. Get that it would out of be, cold. It would be sold out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would... Uh, I would always try to record my clips and my sets there. And, and is that yeah, when you then, started doing the violin in the act? Yeah, I did. I, I started doing it uh, more there than the, – I, I never really got past at Zany's. Uh, I, I wasn't really cookie cutter enough for them. Mm. Uh, yeah, they kind of they want something more appeasing. Where Laugh Factory is a little more wild. Like, huh. Yeah, they, they would have really fun shows, different variety of shows, roast battles and that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, you would think it would be Factory. the other way around. At Zany's would be the wacky right. one. Nah, the, Zany's was tame this week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they're, <laughs> they're fine. They're cool. But um, Talking Chicago comedy smack now. I know, man. Zany's whack. <laughs> nah, they, they're all right. I, I performed at Zany's uh, when uh, they had me do the one-night stand-up New Year's Eve special. They did a New Year's Eve special in Chicago. They picked like 12 comics or something. Right. And it was like a TV special. So it was like That's the great. Very, very first like Chicago TV stand-up special type of deal. Okay. And I was on that and I remember performing at Zany's for that. I'm like, look at me now. Like, you know, yeah, y'all <laughs> How zany am I? You didn't have no say over this one now, did you? Right. <laughs> see, I, see, I can't believe that like I can't believe they didn't pass you on America's Got Talent. That's what I'm like. Oh, they did. They did pass me, but they. Um, well, I, I, you, didn't, you didn't. I didn't make the cut. Yeah, I didn't. Like Heidi Klum was the one who said no. So technically, that's a pass. Simon Cowell and Howie. Yeah, you have to get all Mel, four. All the and uh, Mel B said yes, and then that was no. That qualified as a pass. Oh, okay. Because that's three. Do you resent you know, Heidi Klum democ- for this? Because yeah, well, I would resent Heidi Klum. For I this. do a little bit because I don't think that Germans have a very good sense of humor. First of all, like I don't know, <laughs> well, she, off, needed, she needed to step outside herself before making that decision. Well, first off, what's her uh, talent? And second of all, <laughs> what is that bitch's problem? What did she say that like she, 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 she was like? I just thought I, was, that, I didn't think it was, uh, was funny. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, she was just like I didn't think it was funny or whatever. Wow, <laughs> I, were you ginger at the time? Uh, no, actually, I wasn't. Ah, see, All right. I think it gets to the bottom of it now. Mm. I mean, I, I would have to say uh, Heidi Klum, whose artistic talents in the world are being a model. <laughs> I'd have to say she's probably pretty looksist. She probably had a certain look in her mind that, that yeah, yeah. I looked, um, I looked like I put on like a sparkly shirt, and then I had these tearaway pants because that was part of my act. I would be like, I would be like, so y'all are thinking she could play fiddle pretty good. But can she play fiddle without pants? And then I would rip <laughs> off my pants. <laughs> and uh, and then that was the big reveal. So it was, I mean, the pants were kind of just like, meh, black pants. I mean, yeah. fuck. What do you want yeah. from me? Those are oh, mother yeah. legs. I, I could not pass you. Oh, man. Yeah, I had yeah. twig-like legs. Oh, stop. Then. I'm sure they were beautiful. But uh, <laughs> Heidi Klum, uh, yeah, whatever. Just not beautiful enough for Heidi Klum. <laughs> Well, please. <laughs> uh, at least Simon Cowell said, I mean, he could have been a real asshole to you, but he liked it. No, that's good. No, I he think was it's really, really nice. good. If you have 
that uh, I would be much more excited to have uh, Victoria and Simon Powell pass me than Heidi Klum. <laughs> you mean Melanie B? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, whichever girl. Spice Girl is on there now. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> so now you've been in LA a couple of years. You were at the LA Riot Festival. This is yeah. the thing. I'm like behind the times now. I like. I just did a show with you a couple of months ago and saw yeah. how amazing you are. But everybody knows now. You, you were one of the thousand comics to watch. You were at the LA Riot Festival. You've been. Uh, I saw like a hundred. You know, you've been on. If you go to your website, there's so many uh, praising. Th- so many articles praising you nationwide. Yeah, yeah, I've been doing this uh, for quite a bit. I've been entering myself into festivals for years now. So, um, yeah, I bought I bought tickets to fly out here to do the San Diego. I've bought tickets to fly out to do the Riot Fest. Um, I've I've flown all around the country and done comedy. Um, I I featured for Patton Oswalt, and somebody wrote me up for that. And That's great. That was back in Ohio when I was living in I was living in Chicago, and then. Um, I got hired to do the gig in Ohio, which yeah. was fun. And I, people from my hometown were at the gig that weren't awesome. even, they weren't even expecting to see me. Like they're like, we're You're just there for Pat Pat Oswald? Oh, they see me come out. I'm like, ah, how you like me now? <laughs> 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 it was fun. No, I, was, I mean, like Patton is hilarious and, yeah. uh, he had some really nice, encouraging things to say when I was opening for him and after, I hear he's after very he nice. saw my act and stuff, he, he was like, he was like, oh, when you move to L.A., you're going to book out the ass. <laughs> and I'm like, well. <laughs> um, I'm and like, and he was right. I'm like, JFL, check up on me. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> just for that. I know. Comedy store, check up on me, man. No. <laughs> I, it's, I mean, I mean it's, 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 the thing is, it's there's so many comics. Yeah, the, st- the stand-up is surprisingly more challenging than getting acting work out here. I've been doing really well. Yeah, you you got you uh, really? you actually uh, your first audition. You got a role for as a lesbian. Uh, yeah, lesbian janitor. <laughs> you, it's that, you're like typecast. You're the lesbian yeah. janitor. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then and then that project didn't go through. Ah, oh, it didn't okay. go through. Um, what were your lines as a lesbian janitor? Oh, I think they wanted me to improv them all. Yeah. Yeah, they were playing so, like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to improv a line as a lesbian janitor. Hold on, I'm trying to. Let me get to my character here. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pipes are clogged. Yeah, I can. It's just, yeah. I don't know, but uh, that I, floor is wet. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. There you go. See? Depends the type of lesbian janitor you want. <laughs> right, right. I think, I, I think they were going for a butch, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they wouldn't go for the femme uh, janitor. That's too bad. Yeah. But it's obvious which yeah. side I write. Well, I'm a. Exactly. I don't know. I'm more of a lipstick janitor. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I, but people, I, and you, you, you know, people, the the violin thing is really, uh, you take it off. Now, you do, all the songs that you do on stage, uh-huh. public domain. Yeah. Yeah, and the ones that weren't public domain, I made them public domain. <laughs> and then the, what, what, what there are some, there's some that weren't, that I made, you, you like, different notes. Anything public, yeah, I was going to say, you can make anything public stick. domain if you change the tempo. Yeah. Tempo, or, uh, really, or the notes themselves. Yeah. Well, if you but, play something bad, then it's just like it, it, <laughs> yeah. people recognize it. It's still. Like, it wasn't letting me post Bach because Bach was actually being played by this other violinist. So I really wanted Bach's Rite of Spring, and so I just sped it up a little bit on tempo, and then I could post it and use it as I want. Oh wow! <laughs> now you tell me, because last week we had a singer on and we played her songs, and YouTube flagged it right away. Yeah. You just have to change the uh, tempo. All right, well. yeah. Now, sometimes people go a little crazy with that, and they post things that sound like chipmunks. Oh, I, just, oh, oh, I hate that shit. <laughs> it's like, why what, post this? Now, in your, I, I hadn't taken a look at your YouTube videos from when you were in high school and college. Did yeah. you do that? Did you do, like, the, the, the orange guy and speed things up? or? No, no, I didn't do that. I just, I used, like, whatever was well, public domain. Well, if she's changing they, the notes, then it's her own. No, no, but I mean. Yeah. Covers the, the, and parodies What sketches were you doing when you were doing the YouTube thing? Oh, when I was doing the YouTube, I would use uh, music that I got for free offline. Free okay. play, Freeplaymusic.com. No, but what kind of sketches would you do? Um, comedy sketches. Like, I had this one sketch where I was, I embodied fake news. So I was the, char- I was the character fake news. Oh, okay. So I was I was just like covered in like weird glitter, like my face was like slimy and gross looking, <laughs> and then like I would like pop up out of places that you don't expect me. I'll be like, I'll be like, eggshells have more vitamins than the yolks, <laughs> like <laughs> like say fake news. 
Like, Fake news. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh. oh. That's funny. Yeah, I'd be like, Starfish, Star, Star Kiss Tuna uses Fukushima fish. Or like... <laughs> 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 Well, I, I, that. that was back when that was popular. You know, the whole fake news thing. That was. Oh, I, I think some people are still That was fucking it. everybody up back then. Oh, it's, it's, <laughs> it fucks everybody up. Ugh. Facebook so, is the number one spreader of fake news. Because yeah. people just take a story and post it and roll with it. Yeah. And they don't look into it. And it's bad. They just hope that it's true. Uh, I, I, I'm about ready to quit Facebook. I wish I could. You need Facebook. We all need I, Facebook. I, I need it, but God I damn it. You know. Mark Zuckerberg has trapped us all. Oh, Jesus I mean, if it, weren't, if it weren't for my mother and father, I would be off of Facebook. I just don't. If I, if I wasn't doing I comedy, I would be off it all together. I would no. never. You definitely there. need it for events. <laughs> no, I need, well, but, but we it, need it to revamp your Facebook. Let's we re- need to do something sexy for your Facebook. Let's, yeah. let's revamp now, the Mark, Facebook and be sexy. Okay, let's say All right. You Nicole's got an idea. Yes, I do. You yourself cannot be in sexy fishnets. True? Uh, it's conceivable, but sure. It might actually improve your Se- Sexy to some people. Uh, but you could have two women stand next to you in sexy fishnets. And a quality number of pictures, like Instagram promoters, True. do all the fucking time. And I do all the fucking time, too. You, you know. have beautiful <laughs> women standing next to them, but you respect them too much. You don't put them in classy fishnets. Okay. Well, you take pictures of our faces. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. So, uh, so I'm sure you have a friend in mind. No, but I'm sure you could find. It's the goth community. I'm sure you could find a couple of Hell's Bells or something that, you know, um, all you need to do is do the right photo shoot like I did. But you need a photo shoot with women. Okay. Yeah. All right. See, that's the thing. Now, now we're talking. Now, what was that question about comedy? That you, you could had put two clowns in bikinis with fishnets. I bet that go over really well. No, don't even uh, don't. It, it's. It's been it's uh, the three year anniversary of her death. Don't even. Oh, go there. I wasn't thinking of her. Uh, yes, yeah. I, I went out with a clown, and she she a beautiful she passed clown, away. Be- the most beautiful clown in the world. Yeah, the clown, that may be the true. clown Marilyn Monroe, clown Monroe. Yeah, and she's was a guest on our show plenty of times. <laughs> I'm not so I'm not funny. kidding. I'm not kidding. And no. and she yeah. uh, and and everybody's like, oh, you guys look so adorable together. Their chemistry was undeniable. There was there was yeah. undeniable chemistry and. Unfortunately, she passed away uh, a few years ago. But we were very sad about that. Yeah. Aww. So, uh, so thanks for uh, bringing the uh, show. Okay. So out. don't make them Sorry clowns. About that. No, but, but no, but what 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 was the what was the uh, you had a question about comedy at the beginning that I, I we oh, never answered. So long ago. Um, I know, right? Oh. See how adorable is that? Wow. Yeah, I know. Yes. Poor clown. Your hair got clown. white so fast. Well, I, I dyed it white. That's the whole. He's thing. trying a new oh. look. I think it makes him look younger. <laughs> it's my because you went you went red. Now I'm going for the silver fox. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it I went, like that. It looks nice and yeah. toned. It doesn't look yellow. Yeah, you know? and, and under certain light. But I mean, when you first met me, I had black hair. Yeah. You you forgot all already. No, no, I do remember. Oh, okay. All right. I've definitely never seen it blonde before. You did this recently. This is yeah. I did this last week. Yeah. And it was it's supposed to be silver, but it is it silver. Looks cool. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks. So it's anyway. silver with platinum because the tips are not. They're dirty silver. blonde still. So. So the so the uh, the last the last question I have for you because it's been over an hour it's been like an hour what what were you hour five hour ten it goes by so fast when it's good yeah it does. and you guys are great thank you um, you too by the way man I, you you have questions on deck yeah oh no I I I, I research uh, plenty I, yeah I, yeah I, I, you're like knowledgeable yeah I could I, I, I what's <laughs> the last question Mark well, yeah the, the last question was uh, the difference between the Chicago comedy scene and the L A comedy scene. Oh yeah, yeah. When I oh the crowds, the crowds yeah. in Chicago versus the crowds in LA. What do you think? Yeah. Um, well, I felt like the, a lot of the crowds in Chicago were uh, more forgiving. Uh, they're more receptive to comedy. I, I definitely have more friends in Chicago. I lived there longer. Towards the end, uh, the audience was like really like friendly and ready to be there. Uh, everything was, uh, everything in Chicago was about trying things out, experimenting, failing, uh, and like other comics love seeing that needless to say. And, um, audience members love seeing the experimentation too. Sure. Um, and then like coming out here, uh, at first is like a little less forgiving. Um, sometimes I felt, uh, the, the, uh, 
the weirdness of being a woman in comedy, like, and then going to the comedy store and like the really like broiness that's happening, like at the comedy store, especially a kill. Uh, that's comedy around stores a kill bit, Tony and all it's, that it's, stuff. It's a bit broy. Yeah, I'm like, wow, we never had anything like that, even remotely close in Chicago. Like the the places that people thought were broy in Chicago were like actually really accepting compared to the really? store. So yeah, I've got so, things completely twisted. I thought yeah. like here would be the more, because uh, I, I see so many great female comics that put on their own shows, and yeah. you put on your show, and uh, yeah. and so I, I, I thought here, I mean, I, I just see women taking over. I see the subject matter taking over. I read an article today, they were talking about Bill Hicks, and they were interviewing comics saying, oh, he's a little misogynist and all that stuff. I've yeah. never seen anybody say anything bad about Bill Hicks. Yeah, um... Well, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to hear that he is a little misogynist because, I mean, his, his well, not anymore, material but is yeah, just, his material is just raw as hell. I mean, that's Bill Hicks. He just doesn't he yeah. doesn't sugar, sugarcoat shit for anybody. But um, yeah, I don't know. I yeah, I definitely felt like when I was coming here that being a woman in comedy kind of sucked again for a minute. Right. But then I started getting my own feed and getting to know people, starting my own show like definitely helped with uh like being able to get my own stage time and offer stage time to other bookers in exchange for stage time right uh so yeah but yeah. I, I, mean, I guess i'm just i'm just naive because I, I i i'm not jerry lewis i think i think i, I think women are fine i think everybody's funny so there's some fun uh, well let's be honest there's so many fucking comics here yeah. i would say 20 percent are very very funny such as yourself thanks and you know, and the rest are, you know, it, it varying degrees to unwatchable to, uh, <laughs> they're, they're getting there. Yeah. And, uh, so, uh, I, I, you know, I know, uh, you know, Jerry Lewis said there's no funny women and Andrew Dice Clay had a whole fucking thing about the women and all that stuff. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's completely they changed. definitely make it much harder to be a female performer, I think. Yeah. Or a comedy. It can make it harder to start becoming and a female And also a lot of female comics just get sort of typecast and a sort of lowbrow type of humor. That basically they are just seen as female comics, where the yeah. if you want to be truly good at something, you need to be seen as just a comic. Like right. you don't want yeah. your gender to qualify you one way or the other. And, and it yeah. shouldn't, because I've seen you just destroy places, and uh, you know, just a couple times I've seen you, and it's just uh, and it's not it's not good for a woman. It's just fu it's just fucking great. So, exactly, that's how it should be. And, Thank you. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, you know it's you know you've been here a couple of years, so I think uh, things are changing. I think you're you're finding yourself, and I think. Uh, I, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, like I say, I, I, I'm trying to think the last comic that really impressed me as much as you did, <laughs> and I can't think of him, uh, her, him or her. I can't. I said him, <laughs> Freudian slip. I can't think of him or her who impressed me as much as you did. And I've actually told other female comics about you. Nice. Like, there's no, you know, I, I don't run into, you know, they're like, I don't run into a lot of female comics. I'm like, they're out there. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I think um I think a lot of my anger towards uh, being a female in comedy was let loose when I was still in Dayton and in Cincinnati. Um because yeah. like I said it was it's extremely hard to start even start doing comedy or want to come out as a comic when, you know, people are saying stuff like that and you know people are saying women aren't funny and blah 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 and it's like that that's the hardest part is just even starting. Um and then you know, things happen. I people rub up against me. We fight. There's a thing that happens. I always come out on top. That's because comedy has always been my passion. And uh, female or not female, I 100% think I would have been a comic even if I were a dude. Um, it's just what's always been in my heart. It's what's always given me whatever I've wanted. Boyfriends, A pluses. Uh, a motor vehicle, um, just <laughs> anything. I've well, ever well that's it. something we got to talk about next time. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, uh, but uh, you and I have the same thing. If I don't do comedy for a week, I'm physically ill. <laughs> but yeah. uh, tell everybody now uh, how to get a hold of you and yeah. uh, some shows you have coming up. Now, people might be watching this a year from now, but yeah. you have you have your uh, weird comedy show. Yeah, yeah, I have Wild Weird Comedy Show that's at Bar Lubitsch. Um, and we do that once a month, and uh, we can't figure out what day. So it's just once a month. It's Wild Weird Comedy. You can find it on Instagram, too. We always post when we're going to have shows. Um, my Instagram is Kristen Lundberg Comedy, and I always post my shows, my own personal shows on there. Um, 
And then my YouTube is Kristen Lundberg, and I want to start doing comedy talks on there. So if you know any uh, comedians or uh, people who are thinking about starting comedy, or if you yourself are thinking about going out and doing a set, uh, tune into my YouTube, and I want to I want to start talking about things that surround comedy, especially towards the beginning. Um, and yeah, the the Facebook Kristen Lundberg. But you know, we like we said, we're all reaching our friend limits here, so yeah, well, better me. just go to the Instagram. Not, not me, but uh, <laughs> you, but you know how people like when they you know even in the broadest of cultures, they're like, oh, this guy's a comedy beast. Yeah, you are a comedy beast, <laughs> Nicole. Yes, now you've got all sorts of stuff going on. I'm sorry we got on that tangent. Oh, it's okay. I now tell have every- to uh, head you, home very soon. No, I know, and and, and, and uh, but tell everybody what you got going on, um, and how they get a hold of you. Right now, I'm just looking for screenplay writers. Like I said, so uh, that's what I'm working on at the moment. Um, you can contact me on Facebook. You can send me a direct message there. I won't be able to add you on Facebook, though, so go to at Nicole6Books on Instagram where I'll be able to add you and follow you. And Goth can be on all social media. We went to overtime, but I could talk to you two forever. Everybody <laughs> have a wonderfully creepy week. Yay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>